I think I can put into words how art block has been feeling for me. It feels like you had that one like insanely close best friend that you did everything with and you would see each other every single day and you were super happy together. But then one day they just started to flake on you and they started to show up less and less frequently. And then eventually they didn't show up for a few months straight. Every day I would just keep walking the same path of life hoping that they would pop around the bush and surprise me and sometimes they do but when they do show up it kind of doesn't feel the same anymore. You're able to still have fun and still do things together but it feels like there's a distance or like a lack of trust there. And the more it happened the more I start to blame them for not showing up for me and I criticize them by saying that they were the problem but actually I was the problem. I decided a few days ago that I wanted to do the artist way challenge. You may have heard of the book already, but it's to kind of like refresh your creative self. And I have just been feeling very negative about my ability to create and it's just gotten me into a constant spiral. It's scary to make a change in your life, especially when you know that there is a problem because it's easier to just like literally stay put and do what makes you feel safe all the time. Hopefully by the end of it, I'll be a lot more creative and feel better about it. The author was saying how you should switch things up and experience different things, whether it's as small as driving on a different street to get to your destination. And so I'm literally just out of my apartment, sitting in a parking lot, staring at the beautiful clouds and cars passing by. And honestly, it feels very refreshing. It feels really good to be out here. This book is for people that are either trying to find their way back to being a creative person again or starting the journey to be creative in general. One of my favorite quotes in the intro was, I didn't have to be in the mood. I didn't have to take my emotional temperature to see if inspiration was pending. I simply wrote, no negotiations, good, bad, none of my business. The book is so serious about you actually showing up for yourself that it even makes you write and sign a contract in your journal. One thing the book mentions is how important it is to write out your morning pages every single day. Three pages of non-stop stream of consciousness writing to get all of that gunk and whatever's on your mind down onto paper, and they're not meant to be like smart sounding or to be read by anyone other than yourself. For me and probably many others, a lot of blockages come from negativity that we or people around us put into our heads and it's easy to just keep talking ourselves out of doing what we actually want. And the first few days of Morning Pages made me realize how I have internalized a lot of things and have like just been cruising life with all this negativity inside of me that has ultimately put me inside a box. I literally cried almost every single day that I did morning pages for the first week and alongside that you're also supposed to write affirmations to yourself that counter the negativity. I honestly did not care too much for it at the beginning which she also mentions would happen but now I kind of just use them every single time I notice that I'm being negative towards myself or my art or whatever I'm doing. I believe this is like day three of doing the daily morning pages. I can now understand why it's good to be consistent with journaling because I feel like I've unearthed a lot of, I guess what the book calls enemies to my creativity. I think about these people and the things they've said to me that has actually impacted my confidence in my work and the way that I do things. Like it kind of feels like there's a negative lens that I'm wearing all the time. And when you're kind of like forced to push out three pages every single day, there's no room to not know what to write about. Like you literally have to keep writing and something will be unearthed. My boyfriend got me some tulips. And they match my outfit today. One of the other little homeworks that came along with week one was that you're supposed to write a letter to your worst critic 
and then you're supposed to write a separate letter that's a thank you letter to someone that has boosted your confidence or boosted your creativity and then you're supposed to mail these two letters to yourself i thought why not make it a little fun and i set up a little chair in the backyard and put little tulips there that you know, just like brightens my mood and I just made a whole event out of it. Like, why not romanticize your life and do things more fun? Apparently now I'm supposed to mail this out to myself, so... Wow, this is so on theme. Little tulip stamp. Who do I address it to? Is the mailman gonna think it's weird that it's addressed to Tiffany? From Tiffany? I'm trying to adopt a more active lifestyle, especially now that it's summer. And there always seems to be little pockets of time that could be filled with listening to a good title. And Audible makes it very easy for me to listen during activities like going on outdoor hikes and walks, or when I have to drive half an hour to Taco Tuesdays, or even when I'm painting in my studio or simply just washing my dishes. Without a central purpose, we are all creative. And with the use of a few simple tools, we can all become more creative. Audible has a variety of different titles and genres that you can listen to that range across from art to business to thriller to romance to many, many more. You can download and stream titles straight from the app. It makes it super easy to listen wherever you are. Alongside listening to The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, I've also been very into Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Both are titles that have been helping me out tremendously with my mindset around art and creativity. You can listen to them for free for 30 days as a new member if you click my link in the description. Thank you so much Audible for sponsoring this video. Happy listening and if you have any other titles to recommend, please drop them below in the comments. Hi hi! So one of the assignments from the book is that every week you're supposed to go on an artist date for around two hours and an artist date is pretty much like you do something that you wouldn't usually do but you wanted to do. One of the things that I really wanted to do for like months now is just go to a library and just like go to the art section. It's crazy like I literally have wanted to do this for so long and it, it only took like 10 minutes to drive over and I'm here but I just never do it because I did not prioritize the stuff that I wanted to do. I love the idea of making it a priority to go on an artist date once a week with yourself for two hours. I didn't piece it together back then, but I actually, like the most creative moments during my art blocks were usually when I would take myself out on little adventures. In my last art block video, I brought myself out to a thrift store, I bought an easel for like $10 and I decided to paint it a fun color and I was just having a blast doing something by myself. The author was making a point that a lot of the times we make it a priority to cut out time in our busy schedules for other people and we show up for them on time and we do things for them. So like what is the issue in showing up for yourself and taking yourself on a date once in a while? When you're alone and you're doing something for yourself, you're in full control of the decision making and the plans and you don't have to consider anything other than what it is that makes you happy and I think that really kind of forces you to get to know yourself. What I also found really funny was that even though I already scheduled out time in my week for an artist date, I was supposed to go on Thursday and then it got pushed to Friday and then I pushed it all the way till Saturday. And even on Saturday, hour by hour, I was watching the time tick by and I was still like, no, it's too early. I'm not gonna go. And it's only until I realized that the library closed at 5 p.m. that I got out of the house at 2.30 to go. I think that fear of just being like intimate with myself and being alone with myself was enough to just 
make me procrastinate and hope that something will come up to distract me and that maybe I can go do something with someone else. But after I went to the library, I didn't regret it and I was actually very very happy being alone. I decided to choose out two books. The first one was the Museum of Modern Art New York and it was like this giant textbook. And the second one was also like a textbook, but it was the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Orchids, over 1,100 species illustrated and identified. I really like to just look at pictures and colors and pretty things, and so that's literally all I did. I chose a few ones that I really, really loved, and I decided to do little doodles on them. And I also took a few clips of some of my favorite pieces from the modern art textbook. There were a few pieces from Paul Gauguin and also Matisse and I'm now realizing that I really like very different types of work. Some of the work that I like is very natural and very textured and on the other hand, I really love like hard edge paper cutout work. One of the fears that I've realized I had was that my work won't look consistent if I experimented with more natural looking painting versus more like graphic art. So I think it's kind of holding me back from experimenting and furthering my art in the ways that I want to. I feel so refreshed. There was also like this huge window that I was sitting next to and I thought it was so cool because I was able to see like these baby bunnies running across in front of me. There were a bunch of chipmunks running in front of me and they couldn't see me so they were just kind of like living their lives and I was a spectator of these little rabbits and I thought that was so sweet and so cute. I just got some of my morning pages done. It's already like the afternoon but I kind of had a late start to the morning and I think because of that, my journaling pages felt more coherent. I was writing about how in the past, when I approached artist block, I always thought that the solution was to simply like take a break, take a breather, step away from work and making art. And the more that I go through burnouts each time, the more I realize that like the breaks weren't enough and it kind of felt like a band-aid solution to the deeper problem. Like breaks don't really fix the problem because breaks are literally just time away from a system that has been broken for a long time already and after your break you're still coming back to the same system that will eventually lead you back down the same rabbit hole. I think the biggest issue for me when it comes to like feeling creative and wanting to make art is that I have a lot of fear for it now instead of back then. I felt like there was just so much creativity pouring out of me that I didn't have time to be afraid of it. And so I think because of that, I bury myself in other work. And I guess that is my system is just like running away from what I really want to do by filling up my time and space with other things. I do think that it does also sometimes maybe come down to consistency and like the less consistent and less frequent I make stuff, the more scared of it I am because I tend to overthink and I tend to imagine it as this really big horrifying thing that I can't approach. I finally decided to break out these Johan Studio like little page tabs and I've literally had these in my collection for so long and I just never found the right time to use it. It's been a while since I've actually done like decorating in my journals. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that like I literally used to decorate every single page of my agenda. At a certain point, I do think that I got too caught up with working and not giving myself enough time to just like have fun and play around with cute stationery. These are my only stickers that I have with me in my office. Look at them! I'm gonna put this one because we're marching our way into week two.
Week two of morning pages was actually very different for me compared to week one. I was so much more emotional and in a way, I think I was also kind of angry in week one and I would just non-stop angrily write, pressing my pen super hard into the paper and just letting everything just drain out of me. But week two, I feel like I calmed down a lot more. I was able to talk more about like the things I was doing in the day or reflect on things that happened the previous day. And I wasn't as frustrated. In week two, a lot of it is reflecting about like where we're spending most of our time as well as who is taking most of our time, where is our energy focused on. So a lot of the assignments were along the lines of like drawing charts and graphs of who in your life is actually feeding you this negativity. Another one is you list out five major activities that you do in a week and you write how much time you spend on each task writing out 20 things that you enjoy doing and there's also an assignment where you list out 10 changes 10 small changes that you want to make to your life and it makes you choose one that you'll start for mine i did something simple i just wanted to be able to drink more water. It's not necessarily for just the sake of drinking water, but I know it's good for you, but I want to feel consistent in making positive changes. She also mentions that these changes don't have to take up a lot of your time. It could be as simple as like five minutes in between, I guess like a lunch break or something where you do a quick doodle. It could be literally so small, but just like inserting little bits of things that you enjoy doing into your day. The biggest thing that I have come to realize as I was growing my business was that increasingly the one phrase that I said to people the most is, oh, I don't have enough time. Like, I don't have enough time to journal with stickers anymore. I don't have enough time to go out for a walk or an exercise. I don't have enough time to even take a shower anymore. We do have this time. It's more so we're not showing up for ourselves in a way where we provide ourselves the basic little things that make us happy. We are just, I guess, like giving our whole self up to something that we deem as the most important thing when in reality taking care of yourself is just as important i find the chapter crazy makers to be so fascinating because i know i personally am a people pleaser and because of that i'm very codependent on other people especially their emotions sometimes and so when she was talking about how sometimes in our lives we have that one person or few people they're the ones that are being negative and because you're around them all the time you soak in all of that negativity for yourself during the process of healing you're supposed to i guess kind of like notice when something in your life isn't working and to distance yourself especially during your healing moments I got back from the cafe. Um, I had a little meeting with my friend there. I thought like I would take the opportunity to just stay there a little bit longer and just sketch a little bit. And the whole time I was sketching, I realized how loud that negative voice was inside of my head the entire time I was drawing. What are you doing? Why are you even trying? Like, is there even a point for you to be drawing right now if it's not for work. I love repeating the little sayings from the book. So one of them that kind of naturally popped into my head um, that the author said was like, whether the art is good or bad, it's none of my business. My only business as a person is to create and just let the creativity out. Ugh, we're struggling. I don't even think it was that bad, but in my head, I was just like yelling at myself. But yeah, I was just drawing little flowers and I'm like, why am I being so mean to the flowers? What did the flowers ever do to me?
And along with all of the weeks of this book and each assignment that comes with the weeks, the author says that you should also take care of your physical body. So remember to take some time to move around a little bit every day, exercise, go out and take 20 minute walks when you feel like you need a breather. Simple things like making sure your body is fed with nutritious food, um, I don't know, hygiene, taking showers. So you have the energy the next day to fight the battle of art block and creative block. Honestly, I'm only two weeks in to this book, but I am already feeling a more positive mindset taking over. Probably going to continue this as a series. I would love to know if you want to see more of this and like the rest of the 12 weeks. And yeah, thank you for watching. Have a good day and get some rest. Bye. We out here. We out here. Clean. <laughs> <laughs>